Hello everyone, welcome to today's Halloween review. Today's review isn't an actual movie, but an episode from Alfred Hitchcock Presents, a show that was similar in vain to The Twilight Zone, with an impressive seven season run from 1955 to 1962. The episode we'll be reviewing is season one's episode 13, The Cheney Vase. This episode is actually packed full of Hollywood talent. The titular Martha Cheney is played by Patricia Collins, who has roles in various movies from Little Foxes to Casanova Brown, as well as dozens of TV appearances. Antagonist Darren McGavin, who plays Lyle Endicott, might be more well known these days for his role as the father from A Christmas Story, but actually has over 200 roles in his career. Pamela Jones, Lyle's girlfriend, is played by Carolyn Jones, who would go on to star in a little show you might have heard of, The Addams Family, where she plays Morticia Adams. George George McCready, who plays as museum director Herbert Cother, has dozens of roles in movies and television ranging from Perry Mason, Tora Tora Tora, and The Three Musketeers. Bella, the maid, is played by actress Catherine Card, who you may know better as Mrs. McGillicuddy from The I Love Lucy Show. And Ruby is played by Ruta Lee, who stars in dozens of movies and TV shows such as The Doomsday Machine and Coming of Age. Not many actual movies boast such an all-star cast, but enough with this episode's boasting, let's get into this synopsis and review. The episode begins with Lyle getting fired from his job after missing several days of work the month prior. On his way out, Lyle meets Miss Cheney, who is coming to the museum to sell one of her newest sculptures. Lyle vents to Pamela, his girlfriend and the museum's secretary, about his problems, wishing things would go right for him just once in his life. Eventually, he has an idea and has Pamela write up a letter of recommendation in the name of the museum director. Lyle brings the letter of recommendation to Miss Cheney's house in hopes of getting a job as her caretaker. Miss Cheney agrees to hire Lyle on on a trial basis. From here, we begin to watch as Lyle befriends Miss Cheney and slowly gets rid of anyone Miss Cheney might trust in order to get a hold of the Cheney vase, an object many collectors are willing to fork over a small fortune for. His first step is to break a cup that Miss Cheney was using for her tea and having the maid framed for it and sent away for some vacation time. He then starts to purposely confuse her by increasing her medicine dosage, telling her lies to convince her that she's becoming more and more forgetful, bringing in staff loyal to him, and methodically methodically whittling away at the old woman's grip on reality. When Miss Cheney begins to realize Lyle's true nature and purpose, she makes a few attempts to contact the outside world. Eventually, she manages to seclude herself inside of her workroom and contacts the museum while Lyle is there. Lyle believes that Miss Cheney is willing to sell the vase and rushes back to the house. When he arrives, Miss Cheney meets him at her workroom door with a grin and freely allows him in. Lyle enters to find dozens and dozens of copies of the Cheney vase that Miss Cheney has created to confuse him. The episode ends ends with Miss Cheney mocking Lyle by saying that he can't break any of them in case it might be the real one, and that she could easily sell them all herself and make a fortune. And thus ends the, well, episode. Not movie this time, of course. The Cheney vase is widely remembered as a fantastic example of early psychological horror, a young man taking advantage of an older woman, using drugs and his mental wiles to convince her that she's slowly losing her grip on reality and is wonderfully showcased in such a short amount of time. And watching as the tables are then flipped, with Lyle on the receipt receiving end of a psychological trap makes the ending so much more satisfying. If the Cheney vase was made today, it would likely do extremely well considering the increased knowledge we have about pharmaceutical drugs, psychological manipulation, and access to information. Its use of seclusion and depriving a person of outside contact might actually hit home even more in today's society of instant communication. So that ends today's Halloween review. I hope you all enjoyed it and look forward to tomorrow's review. If you liked the video, please feel free to give it a like. If you didn't, please feel free to give it a dislike and let me know any constructive criticisms you might have in the comments. Have a great day, and stay positive!